This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. The United Nations is warning that tensions in Iraq could escalate after Monday's rocket attack in Erbil, which killed a foreign contractor for the U.S. military and wounded at least 14 other people. The hail of more than a dozen rockets late Monday was the first attack in nearly two months targeting Western military or diplomatic installations in Iraq after a series of similar incidents blamed on pro-Iranian Shiite factions. The UN's top representative in Iraq, Janine hennis Plachert, wrote on Twitter, quote, such heinous, reckless acts pose grave threats to stability. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken earlier said he was outraged and pledged American support in holding those responsible to account. Iraq's prime minister said those who fired the rockets aimed to create chaos. He vowed to keep Iraq from becoming a backyard, in his word, where regional conflicts play out. The barrage of rockets used in Erbil were the same caliber as those fired in recent attacks in Baghdad. They appeared to be aimed at a military complex inside the Erbil airport. The complex hosts foreign troops deployed as part of a U.S.-led coalition helping Iraq fight jihadists. The Biden administration laid out its priorities in Iraq on Tuesday, saying it wants a strategic partnership with a stable and democratic country while preventing a resurgence of the Islamic State terror group there. Deputy U.S. Ambassador Richard Mills told a virtual meeting of the U.N. Security Council that the U.S. plans to remain a steady, reliable partner for Iraq and its people. He said part of that effort is preventing a resurgence of the terrorist group Islamic State. More on this and other stories at our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. The White House said Tuesday that the Biden administration will begin Friday to process the claims of some asylum seekers. In a statement, the White House said it will it will soon announce a virtual registration process that will be available from any location. It said asylum seekers don't need to take action just yet, but instead should stay where they are and await further instructions. A group of nine Hong Kong pro-democracy activists went on trial Tuesday for taking part in an unauthorized, massive anti-government protest in 2019. The activists, who include 82-year-old Martin Lee, media tycoon Jimmy Lai, and Lee Kwak Hong, commonly known as Long Hair, are accused of organizing or participating in the August 18, 2019 protest, which drew more than one million people. Seven of the activists entered not guilty pleas, while two of the activists pleaded guilty to taking part in an unlawful assembly. The demonstration was one of the largest that engulfed Hong Kong in the last half of 2019, many of which involved violent clashes between protesters and police. The protests were triggered by a controversial extradition bill that subjected Hong Kongers to extradition in mainland China. Iran and Russia have embarked on a joint naval drill in the northern part of the Indian Ocean that they say has been designed to enhance the security of maritime trade in the region. This according to Iranian state media. State television said on February 16th that the exercise dubbed Maritime Security Belt will cover an area of about 17,000 square kilometers and include units from the Iranian Navy, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, and the Russian Navy. Iran's state-run Urna News Agency reported that the drill was scheduled to last three days. This is the second joint Russian-Iranian naval exercise since December 2019, when the two countries plus China held a drill in the Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Oman. Five Islamist militants have been sentenced to death in Bangladesh for the murder of a prominent blogger who was critical of re- religious extremism. The judge who sentenced the, to death the members of the al-Qaeda-inspired domestic militant group also sentenced one man to life in prison. The militants were sentenced for the murder of a, Bangladesh, a Bangladesh-born U.S. citizen who was hacked to death in the streets of Dhaka as he and his wife walked home from a book fair. Police say the group is also responsible for the killings of more than a dozen bloggers and activists. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. You're listening to VOA News.